Surviving against any form of the Xenomorph in the Alien universe is a fairly rare occurrence, with thousands upon thousands dying to the tooth, claw, tail, and even blood of the ferocious creature. However, there are many that must first have their lives abruptly ended in order to spawn the next generation of biomechanical horrors. Today, I'll be exploring what exactly a chestburster does to the human body during its growth and then eruption, if this deadly endoparasite can be removed with the host surviving, and the inevitable ramifications of the parasite and procedure to remove it on the host's body. A xenomorph chestburster is the result of a facehugger's impregnation process on a host organism. For the sake of simplicity, we will just be talking about a human spawned chestburster. Once the facehugger grapples onto a human host, the host is incapacitated, and oxygen and other essential nutrients is transferred from the facehugger to the host, along with a cocktail of knockout biochemical drugs. These drugs keep the host in a deep coma like state while the facehugger deposits a collection of liquid mutagens, which are very similar to the black pathogen in nature. These travel into the host and begin a massive reshuffling of genetic materials, transforming the host's living biomatter into the xenomorph's genome. This begins as a small growth and then very rapidly expands to a large and invasive-like tumorous growth. The main biomass will become the chestburster, whilst a large collection of both macro and micro sized weed like roots grow out from the chestburster and infest and attach to vital organs and tissues in the abdomen of the host. These roots steal nutrients and raw materials from the host in order to grow the chestburster. When a chestburster erupts from its host, not only does it break open your rib cage and tear through your tissues uh, of your upper chest, but on top of that, it must rip away from these root-like organs that it used to sap its host. The process tears essentially at all of your internal organs and tissues, ripping, tearing, and causing unimaginable pain to the host. For the most part, even if it was possible for a host to survive the hole in their chest, then the massive blood loss from all the torn apart organs from within their body guarantees the slow and agonizing death of the host with practically no way to survive the process. From reviewing this process, I'm sure that everyone understands that directly surviving a ch xenomorph chestburster is quite and decisively impossible. There's no way around it. And so the only surefire way known in canon to achieve this is through surgical removal of the chestburster in its embryonic stage. Within the comic Alien Defiance, we learn a great deal about how this situation would work. And there are a lot of uh, specifics that need to line up for the removal of the chestburster to be successful. The first point is that the embryo needs to be removed at exactly the right stage in development. What do I mean by this? Well, if it is removed too early, then there is the possibility that there may exist still some raw mutagen le left behind. And so, once the surgery is complete, another creature may be able to quickly gestate. This isn't exactly ideal, as while you may survive the first surgery, you are most likely not uh, going to survive a second. And especially if you do not realize that there is another creature that has begun to develop, that will soon burst out of you. If you choose to operate on the host uh, too late in its development, then there is a chance that the chestburster will mature and may be prematurely awakened by the surgery and begin to rip its way out of the host during the very delicate procedure that needs to occur. The best time to perform this extremely delicate procedure is in the middle ground, so that the mutagen has already done its work and the chestburster won't prematurely erupt. During this time, the host must be quick to seek out uh, hopefully skilled and practiced medical professionals. During the surgery, the host will need to be given a heavy and potent amount of painkillers in order to prevent the host from feeling the invasive and intense procedure. The surgeon must open up the host's chest cavity and locate the main source of the tumor-like growth. First, the creature's main source of blood and nutrients must be cut off. The embryo feeds directly from the superior mesenteric artery that connects to the gastrointestinal tract of the host. 
and so a blood transfusion line must be immediately ready to divert blood back to the host's body during the surgical proceedings to avoid rapid and fatal blood loss. The next step requires the surgeon to then carefully and delicately begin to cut around the roots in order to separate them from the organs that they have infested. Now, at this point the procedure is at its most dangerous, as these roots will probably be deeply embedded into the host's vital organs, such as the liver, heart, lungs, intestines and circulatory system, etc. It is best for the first surgery to simply remove the large and disruptive roots and leave the smaller and more difficult ones uh, till later on. After the roots are separated from the host, the creature can then be attempted to be uh, removed. Slow and steady actions need to be taken in case of missed root connections. And if all goes well, the creature and its embryonic sac will be able to be extracted. Something extremely important to remember is to not damage or slice the chest burster whatsoever. Because even the slightest cut on the creature itself will begin will result in pressurized acidic blood squirting in to the uh, host's chest cavity, killing them despite all the hard work of the surgery. Take note that cutting the roots is, in fact, safe, as they simply act to absorb nutrients and do not possess a sizable amount of xenomorph blood, but merely human bioliquids that travel to the embryonic sac and permeate into the xenomorph throughout through some kind of diffusion. After the procedure, the host will most likely require a large supplement of blood plasma, saline solution, and possibly even platelet concentrate in order to assist with raising uh, lowered blood pressure and healing slash clotting ability. An extensive round of antibiotics and antiviral medication should follow in order to allow the immune system the time it needs to rest, readjust, and recover. After the chest burster is safely removed, as well as the sac and its attached roots, the surgeon then has a choice to either operate uh, to remove the remaining xenomorph biomatter uh, left behind, or to seal up the patient and allow them to uh, have a recovery period before doing that surgery. Now, each way has both its advantages and its disadvantages. If the surgeon acts to remove contaminants uh, on the spot right after they've done this surgery, the already severely weakened patient might not survive the further invasive and damaging surgery to their already damaged organs and internal tissues. There is also the possibility that the immune system could eventually be able to deal with these much smaller level of foreign matter left behind, meaning that the host would not need another surgery. However, on the other hand, the specific roots uh, may need to be removed due to their specific location or depth within the organs. Gauging the dangers of, the, of leaving the roots may be very important to the host's survival. The other unknown is if the roots are left behind, could it actually po uh, possess enough biomass to generate another uh, chest burster? This is in no way confirmed, however considering how little we know of the exact gestation process of the creature, complete and utter removal of every trace of the creature is recommended and encouraged. Now, even after all the contaminants are removed from the host system, it is far from a guarantee that the person will recover or even survive. In most cases, the host may be left with serious and debilitating damage to their body, limited functionality of their vital organs, phantom pains, and increased risk of cancer or organ failure are all possible future avenues that the host may have to endure. That's considering that they do not bleed out or lose a whole uh, set of organs from the first or second procedures. As perfectly stated by Zula Hendricks, the hosts of these aliens aren't really meant to survive the ordeal. In reference to uh, Dr. Hollis, who actually did make at least a uh, part full recovery from a chest burster removal. Now, what you choose to do with the creature and its remains is now completely up to you. While I do recommend uh, a complete and utter termination and disintegration of your specimen, you could also provide these samples to Wayland Chitani for a massive monetary reward. They will reward you with the finder's bonus, but only if you keep it alive. I recommend cooling the specimen in liquid nitrogen, uh, which should keep it at a nice and fresh uh, temperature, 
and halt its growth until the company can make the trip to retrieve their property. Make your decision wisely and let me know what you would do down in the comments section and if you would like a full explanation of the entire implantation and gestation process of the chest burster. Before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know about the merch store called Acheron's Colonial Marketplace. Here, you can pick up a variety of Acheron and Alien themed merch from three distinct product lines, including shirts, hoodies, mugs, blankets, stickers, bags, and even phone cases. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content, the monthly and alien day giveaways, as well as the patron only engraved set of items. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.